So to do a good sampling, there are a few principles that we need to consider. First is random. So we have to make sure we choose a number of observations from the population randomly. And we also need to make sure each of the observations are independent from each other. And the size, the sample size, need to be appropriate. It cannot be too small. Otherwise, it is not representative to the population. Or it is not too large. Otherwise, we will spend a lot of time just to collect the data. So random, so that means that every individual or every observation has the same chances to be chosen. Independency, that means that one individual or one observation has no effect on the other individual. So every individual or observation is independent from each other. So the size actually is a, the number of observation actually is a replicate. So it's how many individuals that we sample from a population. So for the sampling, there are many different types of sampling depend on the research question and also characteristic of the population. So here we're not going to discuss in detail. You're going to learn this in detail after the second half of semester. So I just go through it quickly. So there is a sampling strategy, what we call the simple random sampling, stratified sampling, systematic sampling, and also cluster sampling. So we're going to discuss this in detail during the ANOVA lecture. So just now we discussed about population, the difference between population and samples, and what is the characteristic of the population and why we need to do sampling. So now I have a one example. So let's say this is a population with 18 observation and we have the value, okay, that we measure from each of the observation in this population. So if you sample nine number, okay, nine observation of from this population, what is the most likely nine number that you can obtain? So you can pause the video for a while, think about it for a few minutes. So remember, if your sampling that you conducted is random. So the probability to get an observation with a certain value is same as a chances, or each of the observations has an equal chances. Okay. So in this case, if you take the first number, what is the most likely number that you can obtain? So it's either 3, 4, or 2, because they have so many observations. So it's more likely this number will, you can get it first, correct? Okay. And because the number 5 and number 1 is quite rare, so the chances that you get the number will be lower. Okay, so if you see the frequency, okay, the probability of each of the, the number of the observation for each value. So you can see this symbol is a good representation of a population. So for example, in this symbol, you have about uh, one third of the number is number 3, so same as a population. And the, and the proportion for each of these number is very similar and is the same with the population. So you might want to calculate now. So what is the mean of the population and standard deviation of the population? So you can stand a few minutes to calculate. Then after that, what is the mean of the sample and standard deviation of the sample? So after you have done the calculations, you can compare the mean of the population and sample, are they the same? And also the same division of sample and population, whether they are the same. So I'll just pause this video and then do a calculation. Then after that, the next few slides will show you the, the answer. So in, for the mean, so we need to sum up all the values. So the mean for the population is 3. Okay, then after that, we calculate the sum of square. We sum the sum of square. Then we divide with the number of observation. Then we get the variance. Then we square root the variance, we get the standard deviation. So this is a standard deviation for the population, and this is a mean for the population.
for the sample, the mean is 3 and the standard deviation. So the formula is slightly different. So we have to divide the sum of square with the degree of freedom. So it's a number of observation. In this case, it's 9. So it's 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. So you have to divide the sum of square by 8. Get the variance. After that, you have to square root the variance. Get the standard deviation. If you put these two together, you can see that the mean is the same. Okay. Consider this is a very ideal standard uh, sample. And the standard deviation is slightly different. 